how human flesh was fashioned. Let's see if such beliefs are present in the comedy. The word resurrection appears once in it, in the concluding set of a long discourse on creation, immediately after that one quoted above, in which Beatrice says that God breathed your life without medium. From here, you can also deduce your resurrection. You need but remember the way in which your human flesh was fashioned when both of the first parents were made. Paradise 7, 145 to 148. The commentator's notes more or less affirm the same thing, and that is that for however much it was said that what is created by God is not subject to corruption, one can deduce the resurrection of the flesh being what was made directly by God when he made our first parents. It is always added then that such a privilege was lost through sin, but it was restored by the sacrifice of Christ, through who our corruptibility is only temporary, and at the end of times our bodies, page 113, will rise again. They are all things that we know well, but Dante doesn't say. Only a few commentaries tackle the perplexity that the Dantean verses raise, without, however, modifying its interpretation. We seek to analyze the words of Dante. Quincy means from here, that is, from what I have said. All the critics feel the need to punctuate at the point that, among all the things said by Beatrice, Quincy refers to the phrase that says that whatever is as created without medium, that is directly by God, is immortal. Now, assuming that it refers to this, where is it written that God directly created the human body? In the Bible, not in the comedy. The tercet immediately before is unequivocal. Without medium, God created only the spirit. Nor life, says Dante a term that the critics, as we've seen, translate as soul. It matters little whether it might be soul or spirit. In every case, it is not the body. Beatrice's words refer to the biblical account. Then God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living being. From this account, it becomes clear that man was made in two stages. God formed first, then breathed. It is clear that the creation of human flesh concerns only the first of these stages, the forming, and it was made from the dust of the earth, the clay, that is, one of the four elements from which comes all Beatrice's argument, and so, being as she said, cannot be immortal. And there's more. It's true that God personally formed our first parents, but a little bit before the Bible says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man might be alone. I am going to make him a helper in his likeness. Then the Lord God formed from the ground all sorts of wild animals and all the birds of heaven. God also directly formed the animals also out of clay. Therefore, there is no difference between how man was formed and how the animals were made. The only difference is the breath of life that God breathed into the nostrils of Adam. A confirmation of what I claim is given by the fact that, for the creation of Adam and Eve, Dante uses the words fessy and fancy, which, however unusual, are two expressions of the verb to make. And we have seen how he resumes right in this discourse the typical distinction of the Cathars between the word create and the word make. Only what is created is immortal, not what is made. Page 114. In conclusion, the words of Beatrice undeniably mean, from what I have said, you can deduce, thinking back to how Adam and Eve were made, that a resurrection of your bodies cannot take place. To affirm that they represent a confirmation of the resurrection of the flesh means another manipulation of Dante's thoughts to force it into orthodox doctrine.